This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Open Talk. You talk or I talk or we hear one another and we move on. This Open Talk is, a, is an open program where we bring in guests who will speak into your life uh, through their testimonies and through their, uh, their history and what they have gone through so that you also, right there where you are, may be encouraged. I pray that you will open up your spirit. Our foundation is the word of God. That is our base. So whatever we do is based on the word of God. Whatever we say is measured by the word of God. And our guests have been a big, big blessing. Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you for the comments that you send. They are encouraging. May the Lord richly bless you. This is again your pastor and your friend for a long time, Bishop Mark Karaoke, coming to you through Open Talk. Welcome. And tonight, we have yet another guest who is going to thrill your life. Just, uh, just participate with us. And uh, our, guest, our guest tonight is Liz Wanyoike. Liz Wanyoike is a business, is a Kenyan business woman. She's a Kenyan business, let me put it this way, is a successful Kenyan business woman. And she's going to talk to us about her life and how, how to do business and everything. Maybe you can bring greetings. So just say hi to the viewers, yeah. please. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's God that has made us to be here. And I'm very happy that I'm here with the bishop, a bishop I respect so much, a bishop I love. I have had some encounters with him and I have seen God. So I thank you very much that today I'm going to be with him for quite some time and I would want and I welcome you all into this show. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Liz. I'm so glad that you honored our invitation to come and be with us yeah. and be a blessing to the people. You need, that's why God blesses us, mm -hmm. so we can be a blessing to others. Yeah. I was also, also want you to know, viewers, that she's an educator. She's an, an, an entrepreneur and a philanthropist and, uh, and a philanthropist. Uh, whatever you pronounce it, depending on your English teacher. <laughs> She's the founder and CEO of uh, Nairobi Institute of Business, NIBS. Uh, is, is, is a college, and she's also the founder and the proprietor of Emory, Emory Hotel around Kirishua. Yes. Uh, you know, I went there, I've been, I've been there. Yes, I, I know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I know. And, and, and I want yeah. you to know it's a beautiful place. Emory Hotel, beautiful place. You need to, 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 you need to get there and, get, and, and see the service that you receive in that place. Now, you know I am a talker. Me, I talk. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but today I don't want to talk. I want you. I, I, I want you to talk to, to tell us about yes. about yourself and, and, and just to be a blessing mm. to the people. Now yeah. tell me, where were you? Where were you born, Liz? Uh, to start there, uh, before I move on to my story mm. and everything I do has a reason and a reason to inspire. Now, uh, we have recently opened up a preparatory. It is called Rizi Wanyoke Preparatory School. And this one is purely for us to, learn, to be able to work closer with young mothers. When, because within my journey of being, a, I was, I'm a school teacher, high school teacher. I, I, then I left, I, I've been training in colleges. So now I have seen how these young men and women in colleges and universities are behaving. And I have learned a lot and have seen most of their problems where they are coming from. They are coming from mm, about 70%, I can say, is from parents because parenting is very, very important. So that is just uh, one of the other items I, 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 I have done uh, to try and help the community understand their kids from when they are, when they are uh, uh, at, at, at their growth. Mm -hmm. So I was born uh, in Moranga in a village called Kadikeine. It is, uh, uh, yeah, Kadikeine primary school, I went there, but in high school, my, our father moved us uh, to Kereine. That's where now I went from, from high school. Uh, and then after that, I, went, I joined Kahuhia Girls. Now, uh, I can say that uh, my life initially was full of hardships. Uh, I was born uh, those days towards the end of emergency. 
So I experienced some of the things that were happening to our people when I was still a very young child. And, and so we were driven into poverty by the time my father was detained together with the other freedom fighters for nine years. So you can imagine, we were, our mother was taking care of us. This is the time of emergency. And this is the time that uh, there was no freedom of movement as much as it is today. So we were very poor and uh, we, were, we were going to school, you know, sometimes without fees. Even in my high school days, I had problems of school fees. Uh, but uh, my dad would look for some money and come and pay. Now, we, we, at least I know we were better off than other members of the village because my father earlier on had a job with a colonialist. Mm -hmm. So still, but when he was discovered that he was a traitor, uh, he was really punished. Mm -hmm. And most of the things were taken away. So my growth was difficult. And uh, I had a dream that uh, when I grow up, I want to be a teacher. And I would, I would add, I would add, but not a primary school teacher. Mm -hmm. Why I used to say not a primary school teacher, I just don't know. So when I finished my form four, I passed well, and uh, I, was, uh, I was admitted to one of the training colleges that is called Kagumo, but it, to train as a primary school teacher. And I told God, uh, that is not what I wanted, and I did not go. Fortunately, I don't know why my parents allowed me not to go. And sometimes I suspect that they didn't have money mm. to pay. <laughs> yeah. Because even those days, paying for anything, I mean, even if you ask for two shillings, the two shillings or the, 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 it was not there. Let's say the 10, the, the 10, the maybe the 2,000 shillings we could not afford. And then you have to buy uniform, you have to buy this. So somehow, I did not go and I stayed in the village. And uh, later on, as I was desperate there, I was wondering how I'm going to be a teacher, the way God, I had prayed to God to make me a teacher, a miracle came. And then uh, somebody told me that we're going to, she had been admitted to a high school in Nakuru that was training secretaries. And because of my desperation, and uh, when I went to Kahuhia, is the only time I realized there's a better life somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Some of the girls used to, especially from Kiabu, they used to give us um, stories about Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Nairobi, they would tell us, you know, those people use electricity. And you know, those days there was no electricity. <laughs> we used electricity. Uh, they said, you mean you didn't have paraffin lights? No, we, we, there we use electricity and drive there is good. And then one day I persuaded my mom if I can go and visit them in Kiabu, somewhere in Gashie. So we went through the city. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they did was to take me for a movie in Cameo. Mm -hmm. You remember Cameo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I could not believe this is, you know, you are seeing things, you are seeing uh, people. People. Uh. You know, and Wazugus, you know, and oh my God, I said, I'll live in Nairobi. And one day, I'll live in Nairobi. And this time, I'm still in the village. I'm still in the village after school. During the holidays, we go back to the village. So that opened my eyes. And I kept on praying to God, please, God, let me one day be what I would want to be. So now from high school, you know, me, I think there are miracles. You, yes, th you they, teach they us are, about miracles. Uh -huh. eh? When we were just about to graduate, I did secretarial, which was a very good program. But I could, not, I could not imagine myself working for somebody as a secretary. And I was shy. And uh, I was shy. I was naive. I, I was not, and I think I was just naive. I think I was a very stupid young girl. And I was not, I, I just could not understand. Mm. Then when I was imagining what's going to happen to me after finishing this course, mm. the third term, some Wazugus came from Canada. Mm. They came, they came to a class, and they told us that uh, they want to recruit anybody who wants to become a teacher to teach in high schools. That's the time, if mm. you remember, when business education was introduced in Kenya. Yeah. There were no treaters, teachers mm. who were trained for mm. that. So, 
to become a high school teacher. Oh my God, I couldn't believe. In fact, I did not even wait for them to finish. I was in front there, mm -hmm. and sit, waiting to hear the instructions. So uh, I, we were taken to Kenyatta College, that one, that's Kenyatta University. It was still a college, mm -hmm. and then be trained as business teachers in high schools. Wow. Imagine. So you quit the secretariat, the secretariat yes. course yes. before you graduated? Yes. No, oh, yeah. we had completed. Oh, yeah. They okay. wanted people who had completed mm. secretariat. In fact, the others were gotten from government secretarial colleges. Mm -hmm. Or oh, the one in Nairobi, the one in Mobasa. When we met there, every, everybody else had gone through uh, the, 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 the secretarial college, the okay. secretarial course, mm -hmm. and also some young men who had done accounts. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in, a, in the secretariat, there's also a bit of accounts. Which that was to be taught in high schools and commerce and all that. Mm -hmm. So my, I asked God, now, what is this all about? Now, so I had come from Kahuhia. I passed through Nairobi to go to Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Now, by that time, lucky enough, one of my, my older sister, she got married immediately after high school. Mm -hmm. So she didn't even wait. So she was in Nairobi. So now I would go and visit her mm. in Nairobi. I never went back to the Shaggy mm. officially now. <laughs> <laughs> from school to my sisters, from school to my sisters. But I was thinking now, when I finish, when I become a teacher, uh, the first thing I would do is build myself and build my dad a stone house. Mm. Because we used to live in a mud house and it had challenges and all that. That was my, the first thing I was going to do when I get a job. So we went to Kenyatta University and we were trained as teachers. Then we went up for attachment and then from there we were to be posted. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we were waiting for posting, and this is the, the, the part sometimes, uh, that makes me feel uh, sad. Mm -hmm. uh, now we had to, now my sister was living in a one room house. So, um, I had been advised now to go home and wait for mm. posting. So that time, I, we were, while we were working, doing our attachment, there was one guy, mm. one man, who had noticed me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he was looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know uh, why, because we were several, we were about six girls who were going from Kenya at the college why he picked on me. So me, here is somebody now who is promising me mm. not to go back to the village. Mm. So what he did when we finished, he, he I hired for me mm. a hostel. Okay. So when he hired me for a hostel, I went there and I was staying there, hostel, and then he would come take me out, he would come and uh, take me out. And then one day he told, he told me, let's go home to his home. And we went. Mm. And that's how I got married. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <Yeah>. one, <laughs> it was a, it was, I didn't know I was getting married, mm. uh, because I didn't know that how people get married. Mm. Uh, uh, but I didn't have a choice because I liked him, mm -hmm. and he liked me, mm. so I settled. And during my first years of you know, there was a, a gap, an age gap, because he had separated with his wife. Mm. So I, 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 there was an age gap of about 16 years. But me, because of loving my father so much, for him, he was a good guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to, he, to me, he was, you know, my mentor, yeah. you know, somebody who could do that. And he was very nice to me. So I was happy, mm. and uh, I got married. I, I mean, I stayed there. I didn't know I was getting married. Until now, my parents heard about it. So, and then he was summoned, so we went home. And that's how we got married. Uh, then that's when I became officially a wife, mm. after he had met my parents. Mm. Uh, I think the age, age gap was not doing very well for us. Mm. Uh, and again, none, no experience. You know these days, you people, when, before you marry people, mm. if you remember what you did with their, with their parents, mm. you have to call them and counsel them. Yeah. And, and tell them what marriage is all about. Mm. Those days, there was nothing like that. Yeah. There were no, that, you know, and there were no mentors. 
there were no motivational speakers. There was nothing. It's just school, 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 school. Mm -hmm. So you, when you get into marriage, you, you think now, just like your mom and dad, mm -hmm. you stay there, you no know, questions. I couldn't remember my mother asking my father questions. So no questions, no anything. But after some time, I think uh, the gap widened. Instead of coming closer, mm -hmm. it widened. But uh, he still, he was very patient with me and my learning, and uh, I stayed there for 26 years. 26 years? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the kids were grown up, mm -hmm. but now this time I'm also now a bit mature. Mm -hmm. So how many kids did you get? I mean, he got three, but I took care of six. Okay. He had, I found three kids in the house, mm -hmm. because after their divorce, mm -hmm. they, they, he took the kids. Mm -hmm. So I took care of the six kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, also my siblings and some of his uh, members of the family. It was a big house. Mm. And by the way, he was a very good guy. Mm. In fact, I don't think even in my way as I see men, I haven't met somebody else. I have not had a wife who had given me a story mm. like him. But with that, that uh, maybe uh, the, 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 the lack of interest with each other. He is pulling this side, I'm pulling that side. Mm. And I think I was also somebody who who would do other things. Eh? Mm. I still loved people. I used to, to do some investments, buy some plots here and there, mm. but he wasn't for that. He mm. would ask me, now, why are you doing this? We, 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 we have everything, and uh, the kids uh, will now uh, give them education. They can earn their own money. We mm. don't have to do this. And for me, I was the opposite. Mm. So we sort of like we are arguing so much mm. and uh, because of lack of a common goal. Mm. And today when I think about it and when I'm advising young people, it's always good when to date and to get to know each other mm. very well. Know your temperament, know the temperament, know how this guy behaves when he's angry and how this lady gets when she's angry and, and, and take time. There's no need of rushing. Yeah. I have seen, you know, I'm, I'm, I, through my own experience and through my own naivety, because of wanting, not wanting to go back to the village, mm. I ended up with, I can say, a nice man, but with completely different interests. Mm. And that is why our marriage did not work. But you imagine 26 years I had done everything. And uh, I'm, very, um, I'm very happy because all my children and his children, they have all gone out of the country. Mm -hmm. So it's only one last born who was left. So there was not much of a problem. So now, when, it, when I was to go, and uh, he, was, he was angry with me, uh, so I, I, had, I was left with nothing, mm -hmm. you know. The, you know, in those days, I don't know how you do it with your wife. Mm. When you buy a property that maybe I mm. don't know, even mm. you can say yes, well, even if it's not yes, you use the, the two names. Mm. <laughs> those days, mm. a man of those days, they believed in being a man. Mm. So me, I didn't have anything. So even the car I was driving, it's only recently when I had asked him to put my name in one of the cars. So I was lucky. I left there with only that car mm. and um, my handbag. I wasn't even allowed to go and park. Mm. So I left. After 26 years? Yes, mm -hmm. after 26 years. And uh, for me, I, I still remember it was very traumatic, uh, but um, it had to happen. So uh, I left, and what I did, I went back to the YWCA now to strategize on what to do. I didn't know what to do. And then I did not want to go home because mm. my, my parents were very good Christians. Mm. So they couldn't imagine something like that happening mm. uh, with one of their daughters. So it was, we, I, I talked with some of my friends. And uh, in fact, I was, I was also running the family business. Mm. So the family business was also taken away from me because I was teaching in a, in a college that we had bought. Mm. So, I, I was there, um, I best started, and I remember one day, and I thought maybe why don't I go to a lawyer? And yeah, I want to go back home. So I went to a lawyer. Uh, when I went to a lawyer, she asked me questions. 
I answered the questions and then she, she told me, no, that cannot happen. Let me go to court and he should be allowed to go in, go back home. Then I was asking her, how would I go back home if we are not in good talking terms? She said, no, even if you are not talk in talking terms, you belong to that home and that is your home together. So you have to go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when he went, when she went, I think he got angry. He was, that's not what he was expecting. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was expecting me to go home and then Wazes would be sent in that kind of thing. So me, me, I did not want to go home. So what happened is, uh, when he received that summon letter, he got angry, mm -hmm. very, very angry. Mm -hmm. And he said, he, he, he responded and said that I was not his wife, that uh, I was his girlfriend mm -hmm. of 26 years, mm -hmm. and he had a wife. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, so me, I did not understand. I read that letter four times. Then I started, I went somewhere in my car and I cried. Mm. I cried and cried and cried and cried, I don't know, nonstop, maybe. Mm. And she, I, I was not blaming him, I was not blaming myself, I was just blaming the situation. Mm. Up to today, I have never shukiered him. He is still, he, he passed on later, but he was a good man. Mm. And uh, I think it's me who failed to grow up. Mm. You know, I did not mm. grow up to his mm. expectations and standards. So I am, now we, we had some friends, of course, we sat one day somehow and we, we were at what. Then they asked me, so you were used to buy some plot somewhere there, yes. Now, the only thing you can do is start your own business and the best thing for you to do is teaching. I told them, yes, that is what I know best. So we sold, there is one house I had, I had built up and it was good, I sold that house. Mm. And then, of course, I had saved some money. I made that combination. Mm. And uh, lucky for me, I had, I, I, I'm, I'm better off than some other ladies, you know, who get into the same situation. But there is always a way. There is mm. always a way. I believe uh, that even if you don't have any money, you can't lack somebody who can give you 5,000 or 10,000 go and start something small. But for me, I was lucky because I had, I, the, my husband was okay, we had money. So I had bought those plots and those are the ones I sold. And uh, I, we got enough money, then we sat down, I got some people to help me. We started a committee, then we started NIBS. Now, Nairobi Institute of Business Studies. Uh, so what happened is, where I was teaching, I was, the, I, I had trained so many students, mm -hmm. and the parents really liked me. Mm. So what I did, when I went to the news, nation newspaper, because mm. I, I was okay, I was not a bad person. Mm -hmm. I, so I think, because the response I got, I took my whole, my photo, mm. and I put it in the nation newspaper, mm. just before the dead announcement. Mm. You know where they put photos? Yeah. So yeah. people would take and see, hey, yeah. This is easy. Uh, what is she doing here? Then they would read that I have moved from Temple College mm -hmm. to NIBS, Nairobi Institute of Business Studies. Mm -hmm. So when I opened, the first day, I got 25 students. Wow. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And then from that time, they started, the college started growing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we continued with our negotiations out there, but uh, I felt that uh, or that getting back together now would still bring more and more complications. Mm -hmm. And you see, I, I came from school to marriage. Mm -hmm. I have never been my own person, mm -hmm. you know. So I decided, let me just first of all start this institution because already I've been chased out of the other mm -hmm. and see whether it can make a difference in my life. And that's the time I decided I'm going to start a school. Uh, so that in any case, if any woman would get into a problem like I am, mm. and they have their papers, the certificates they get from colleges, the certificates they get from universities, it is an asset. And if you have a problem with your husband or with your other family, they can take away everything from you, but there's nothing, there's something they cannot take away from you. Your integrity, 
if you are and the, the education you attained, your certificates, even if they ban them, you can go to Kenya National and retrieve them. Mm -hmm. Even if they do, whatever they do, I could go to Kenya University and get back my, my, my certificate. So it is the only thing you have in cases of trouble. And it is the case you should not just go into depression. I was, I went into a marriage depression because I had lost everything, I had lost my home, I had lost my, I, had lost, I also thought I had lost my children. And it was um, a very, a, a period I wouldn't want anybody else to go through, mm -hmm. although they're still happening. But with my education, I was able to start life mm -hmm. again. And within one year, the college was full. Mm -hmm. I had 400 uh, students. Wow. And from that time, it has never stopped growing. And I have, uh, the reason why, uh, my college has done well is because I don't just work for myself. I work for the youth and they know it. I mentor youth and I talk to the parents on parenting. We talk on marriages and we advise the young, both young men and, and women mm. before, like I said before, about understanding the person you are going to stay for the rest of your life with. Because both ways, it could be my fault, it could be his fault. So both ways get to know each other very well. Don't rush. Mm. I always tell my students, yes, I was lucky because I rided with somebody who wasn't that bad. He wasn't bad. Mm. I, I have nothing to complain about. It's only that my personality and his personality were like this. Mm. So I urge them not to rush into marriage, to complete their studies, get their certificate, then get ready to get into marriage marriage is permanent. Mm. It is not something you should walk in and out, walk in and out. Mm -hmm. It can be chaotic because it involves your children mm. and children are the ones who suffer. It inv or involves your family, both the families. They are the ones who would suffer. So marriage is another very, very important part of your life. Don't move it blindly. I go into YouTube and I see so many people suffering. Yes, there are people who change later on. There are some women, and I don't say they are just men, even women who are not good wives. So even for men, when you're looking for a wife, look for a wife. Don't look for the beauty, the way she walks. Mm. The, the body shape. Body shape. <laughs> <laughs> because I see young men like oh, you see, every girl when I watch TV, they're all beautiful. Mm. They're all beautiful. I don't know even how you people choose the one. Don't look at that. Look at the heart. Date. And look at that girl. You know? Let her look good. There's nothing wrong. Even the good ones, are, they can be very good in, at heart. Even the ugly ones can be bad and be bad and mm. be good mm. you know, at home. Marriage, young people. If you are listening, marriage is not a joke. It is not a holiday. Mm -hmm. It is permanent. And if you cannot, if you are not willing to grow all together, and then I know there are so many hitches, but the, the, you know, before, uh, maybe these people who are older than us, mm -hmm. they, there was nothing like divorce. Once you get there, you are treated like a woman. Mm -hmm. and, but women accepted but normally, they were not as harassed as we are today. But uh, you know, again, I tell young people that uh, the man will always be the head of the family. We will always be on top. We will always be the, the one who, should, who you should respect first. Mm -hmm. Before he respects you, know that God created man first. And then he created a help, a helper. Mm -hmm. So be that help, helper. If you see your husband has some faults, Maybe try to discuss. If you have got good in-laws, talk to them and tell them what, the, the, what is happening, even before he starts reporting you. So I, that is the first phase of my life. Mm. Now let, let's go back to Nibs. Yes. Uh, you, Nibs is started, is doing very well. Yes. What courses are you teaching yes. at that time? And yes. you, do you still have the same courses? And have you added others? Yes. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. You know. We, would, we, only, we do what is trading. You know, when we started NIBS, business administration, uh, business administration, journalism, IT, 
that is computers, and accounts were the ones that were trading. So we started with those ones that uh, there were so many jobs. You know, year 2000, if you remember, Bishop, mm. it is the year when economy was coming up mm. in, a very, in a very big way. There were so many jobs in offices. Mm. There were so many managers required, so many supervisors, so many uh, things that needed business administration uh, and, and, and business management. The, the computers were coming in. There were so many people needed in the counter in the, in the ACT area. People were, studios were opening, because that time it was KBC and uh, others, some little others. People were starting now to form even their own TVs, their own radio stations, they were all own everything. Even you, you had, for the first time, you had a vernacular uh, TV, which was Kameme, at that same, same time. So again, that one was trading. Mm -hmm. So from that time, we were teaching mainly accounts and those ones I have mentioned. Then time changed as the college grew and as we bought more and more lad. Then it came with, with the universities, the government closed colleges. Mm -hmm. Remember the technical yes. colleges? Mm -hmm. They closed the colleges that were giving technical skills. They closed all those engineering courses. Most of them, they stopped, they stopped giving them at the diploma level. They started degrees. And that one was something, and that they came an opportunity mm -hmm. for us now to take over. Mm -hmm. what the government was not taking anymore. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was to, NIBS was to become a university. We had applied and we were certified. Mm -hmm. But the last minute I said, okay, first of all, let me try uh, the diploma because the results, most of the people who qualify properly to go to university are 30%, mm -hmm. less than 30%. Mm -hmm. Now, the 70% were diplomas and certificates. And I always remind, reminded them, I don't have, I didn't have a degree then. I was a diploma holder. And I had done all that because I went into the program I am experienced in, I am passionate about, and that was teaching. So that's why I felt that uh, let me remain uh, offering the majority of our young citizens the courses that will make them take jobs, diploma programs, if then today, Bishop, mm -hmm. most of the people who are unemployed, most of them are degree holders. Mm -hmm. Because the universities now, they opened up private universities, they became uh, not so good. Mm -hmm. They were just teaching, they were growing because most parents think, they feel that unless my daughter, my son goes to university, I'll be thought like, like a lesser person. Yeah. So it started becoming like, um, a prestige thing mm -hmm. to take your son, your daughter to university, so that uh, especially now from the village, they can when they're having their drink or they're in church uh, after church, they will say, you know, I'm going to Nairobi University, I'm going to Mount Kenya University here to you see that's where my son is, mm -hmm. you know, some kind. <laughs> <laughs> then they, you know, diploma. I'm telling you, I my college was full mm -hmm. like this. We mm -hmm. kept on, uh, and again for me. I have never thought of money first. Mm -hmm. And everybody who is doing business there, don't think about the money you are going to collect mm -hmm. first. Think about the quality you are offering, the facilities you are offering. Because most of my students, they come there by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It is not the marketing you see. Mm -hmm. There are some people who market. You know, for us, we market only when we have an intake. Mm -hmm. There are other colleges that they are on air 12 months mm -hmm. in a year. Mm. But if you go there, there is nothing. Because those are business people. They are looking for uh, quick money, business money. They don't uh, do that. You know me, I said I, I'm somebody who came from a background whereby I want to do the best for the young generation. So what I do before we do anything else, we, right now we have engineering courses. We are now uh, mainly uh, technical. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing skilled courses, uh, and the government has copied us. Now mm -hmm. they are back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, ba the government uh, is back. Mm -hmm. And before that time, I also used to talk on air yeah, a lot about uh, the certificates that are being offered by universities. Mm -hmm. you, you try to 
you try to interview out of 100 CVs you mm. have gone through over a week, mm. you can only get two or three. Mm. But when you invite diploma holders, you feel you don't even know which one to employ mm. because they have the hard zone skills. Yeah. So we, the, we, we, the universities were offering very poor quality uh, service and even though the government has admitted mm. that, that uh, everything I used to say, I don't know whether the government used to listen, but later on you see that they have also noticed mm -hmm. that these people are getting papers because there are 500, 600 in one room mm -hmm. uh, being taught online or what, all that, but they don't have the skills. Again, university, and I'm sure most, some of you, most of you, most of, of you have gone through universities, mm -hmm. there is no... It, you just go there to get your papers. There's one thing they, 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 they forget, that the character is as important as the papers mm -hmm. you get. Mm. What do I mean? You may have an A yeah. in everything, but when you go there, uh, you go there drunk, you have been, you have, been, you have hangover, you can't go when you are struggling, it's a hangover, which makes you feel you are there. You take a panadol, you go for an interview because you drank the whole night. They go there, some of them have already got drugs in their blood. Others cannot even start a job because now they don't want to be controlled. Mm -hmm. So I looked with my committee at all the things we look for when we are interviewing. Mm -hmm. And we decided character here is very important. I can tell you it is so difficult to control these young people, but I have done it. Mm -hmm. And we have succeeded in many ways to try and make sure they have education with character. So when these people go uh, for attachment, they normally shine out mm -hmm. more than other, you know, some big hotels like uh, Leslie, like Safari Park, they'll get from NIP, they'll get from uh, universities, you know, who are doing hospitality. But you see the hospitality from universities, they have not done much of Mm -hmm. of uh, skills, but our students are purely, purely skills. Mm -hmm. Now, the theory is, of course, they have to run uh, theory subject and then practical, theory and practical. Mm -hmm. So I decided we are going to work hard to make sure that it's education with character so that we can now uh, graduate students who will be acceptable and who can now at least know not coming late is important, not missing work is very, very important. Respecting your, your seniors is important. And all those things. And that is exactly even what you people do in church. Mm -hmm. In church, you teach values. Mm -hmm. There are times I've been to your churches mm -hmm. very much. And anytime I sit and I listen, I've been to Mercedes church mm -hmm. mostly there where my PA goes. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, we are being taught life skills. Mm -hmm. You know, life skills, life yeah. skills, life skills, and everything is from the Bible. Mm -hmm. There is nothing we are taught to do as a parents that is not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. even, uh, even bring up kids is outlined in the Bible. And they give very detailed examples of that. So anytime when I'm going to churches to talk, I go, I use the Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't just, you know, I use the Bible it's because you are in church, so you expect to have your kids go to a school whereby they will also follow you in church. It is d difficult, mm. Bishop, these days to take young people to church. Mm. It is very difficult. They go, they are good at church level, but I've seen in your church you have very many youth. Congratulations. Mm. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> some of the other churches, mm. I don't want to say where I come from, mm. in that area, that area, the, you find that the youth, those who come to the first service, are not as many. Mm -hmm. You go to your churches, they are full, mm -hmm. like this. But uh, it's because youth also, they are youthful. They want to do, you know, the way you have made them vibrant, the mm -hmm. dancing, yeah. the whole, it has worked for the youth. Mm -hmm. In some of our churches, there is nothing like that. Mm -hmm. It is, no, it's a bit mild. So I'm not uh, here to condemn any style because we are all different here. 
But what I'm saying, I'm talking about the young people because they are the, our next generation and how we need uh, to work with them. Now, coming back to young mothers, young women, what I tell them, now, when I go to rest, the other day I was in, uh, I was in Kegumo talking to uh, some ladies who were put together in a church. Mm -hmm. And I was told about their pro the problems that are there. They are committing suicide, their kids are getting to drugs and all that. Eh? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I told them, so long as you are healthy, you are strong, uh, don't give up. If you are a housewife, if you are based in the village, the most important thing is for you to make sure that you have food for your family. And that is number one. Mm -hmm. And then there are things you can do. The most important thing is never ever give up. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you are that desperate until you feel that you want to commit suicide. Go to church and ask your pastor or whoever you find in your church some kind of advice, can, some kind of what do you do. We are in this situation. So, and again, in my, my other area of mm -hmm. uh, talking about the youth, eh? mm -hmm. uh, relationships with you young people mm -hmm. uh, is becoming another killer. Mm -hmm. Either marriage or dating. Uh, I think there may be from both sides the, their expectations, I don't know, they are high or what is bringing into that kind of thing. But if you look also, uh, maybe there is some kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say because I've not talked to somebody, but what we, we have had, there are too many killings and suicides. And it is good if you feel you are in abusive relationship to consult maybe your parents or to consult people. Unfortunately, people are being consult they are consulting, but they are getting back together, they are backing together. But if you see something is happening again and again, mm. it's not going to change. Just, even if it's the man, just run away. If it's the woman, run away. If it is happening and we are discussing it with the family and it's happening, something bad will come out of that. So that is another thing that is, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, affecting the country so much mm -hmm. and the other thing is breakups you know we are handling those breakups <laughs> the other day you know the other day uh, there were there were students mm -hmm. they they had picked up a relationship and i think this young man one day went and told this girl you know what me it's over i don't i don't think we are doing the right thing Let's mm. first of all finish our school, our mm. our studies. We finish our studies, and then we can meet after that because the principal talked to us, and I think we are getting there. Okay, she said, okay, fine, fine. The following day she came with a knife. This is a true story. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and she, the guy, she confronted the guy, and the mm. guy realized that she was holding a knife. Oh. So he ran away, and why we got to know that is because. The boy disappeared from class mm. for about four days. But then when he came back, of course, he has to explain to us. Mm -hmm. That's our rules and regulations where he was. Mm -hmm. Then he said that, that he came to my office and he told me that is what happened. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we, 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 I, we went, we tried to do the case. I don't know whether that the case has been finalized because that happened this mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. last week. I'm still trying to find out what happened. But you see, um, I would tell these people in colleges and universities, th th these relationships, 90% of them don't add in marriages, don't mm. end up in marriages, 90%. Mm. There are those ones that are serious, but what I tell them, uh, you are over 18, if, if, but remember you came here to study, do, First of all, take, give priority to the studies. Mm. If you have a friend, that is second choice. And let it not affect your studies. Mm. You boys, allow these girls to complete their courses because mm. you'll be the same ones to abandon them yeah. when they get the babies mm. and they get pregnant. There's another one now again who got pregnant. And then I thought, but I told you, then she told me that uh, the, when she went home, mm. the mother, the parents kicked her out. Mm. So she went to her grandmother, gave birth, and then she came back uh, to college, and then she told me she has 
she worked a bit because she stayed for one year. Then she got, got some money and she's staying alone. But sometimes she doesn't have food. So I offered to give her mm. to be buying her food because mm. she's remaining with only one year. So young people, life is not permanent where you are. Even us, we were girls, even him, he was a kijana like the sun here. See, you could have Arafu, now, can you do what your son can do? Neither can I do what my daughter can no, do. No, he can't. You are, you are growing old. You are not starting to just because the, the ICT, the computer, the music, the movies, the, the things that you are watching here. Remember, you become a father and a grandfather. You know, there's one thing I tell the young people. Yes. And I tell them, I tell them there's one thing that will always happen to young people. Yes. Would you want to know it? And they say, yeah, would you want to know it? And then I pause and I say, they grow old. Yeah, they do. You and know, with the technology, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, with technology, it will do everything. It will have the best and the worst of technology. There is one thing, the Mzungu, who invented that, has not been able to, 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 to bring mm. the process of aging. You know, if I can look at my phone and I, you know, there is that what I call Photoshop. Yeah. I Photoshop myself at your age. You know, I used to be a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. Look at myself like this and say, computer, I want to remain like this. Mm. Until I, it's not going to happen. It, but you it, can go to computer and, and communicate with the people all over the world. Mm. But it has not brought in the, the stop, the process of aging. Use it knowing you leave it there and you go. Like mm. now, even me using the computer, it's, I have to. But it's not something I enjoy. Mm. These people, the things that, that are on that tablet, that are on that phone, mm. they are not real. These are people acting. Mm. If you want to waste your life, start doing what you see on those videos you people watch. Mm. And then you see your life will be so miserable mm. in some years to come. No, you are very important to the world, you are important to your parents, you are important to community. And what we need is people who can do things, big things, uh, become rich, help others, mm -hmm. and because you can't help everybody, help the ones you can, mm -hmm. that's the kind of man and woman we want. And the process, you have to get married, I, if possible, if you get a man and get families and become a mother, Mm -hmm. and become a grandfather mm -hmm. and then teach them morals. Mm -hmm. So you, you have said you have said something which maybe we want to, to pick on. You have talked about helping people. Yes. That, that they should be you know we are living in a society mm -hmm. where everybody wants to grab something for yes. themselves mm -hmm. and to amass for themselves. Mm -hmm. But you have talked about uh, helping people. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something about uh, Liz Wanyoike Foundation? Yeah, you know yeah. I I I help people but people I don't know this because I'm not able to to collect the money, you know, to solicit for mm. money. Mm. And uh, when I do, people think I have money. Mm. So why am I asking? Mm. There is one thing you, uh, people should know that uh, when you see a growth in a company, if I can tell you the loans we have, I'm sure you are aware yeah. of that. Mm. You cannot put up a building like this mm -hmm. from your pocket. Most of our what they call wealth mm -hmm. is in the assets mm -hmm. and what you do with them, the, the, the work you do, because it comes back to that. So I don't have money, but I have some personal cash, mm -hmm. not much, which I do help the most needy, most needy. And mm. not all of them, because there are so many others also doing the same. Some churches are doing the same. Some other many organizations are doing the same. Individuals are doing the same. I do it also. I concentrate on fees and uh, the school fees, especially for dropouts and high school fees. And small, small things here, 5,000, you go and buy Mutuba there, you come and sell, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and it's those small, small businesses, especially ladies, do. Mm -hmm. uh, to, if you start now just looking for mask or just looking for Mutubas, I think the one that is, people are mainly in Nairobi, and uh, many of them have found a jacket like this, it's a Mutuba jacket, although mm -hmm. mine I bought a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
so it is, um, it is possible for people who has the passion to trade. It doesn't have to be millions. Mm -hmm. It has to be even 1,000 shillings. You can do a lot with that. And also, it is not possible for everybody to get because people are many, very many. Right now, during COVID time, it was very sad because so many people, even people who are working in offices, lost their jobs. And I have some several cases where by even the wives disappeared, they left the men there. I've met so many single fathers mm -hmm. taking care of four mm -hmm. or three kids because the wives just disappeared. Because maybe they'll blame the man. Maybe when you had the money, you used to run away. Now it's my turn to run away. So we are having all sorts of things. But Kenyans, we have to be strong. And God loves Kenya. Mm -hmm. If you see what has happened in other countries, here, we, at least we have freedom, freedom to do business freedom to do so many things and if you are healthy if you are healthy and you have let's say you are in the village and you have some maybe a piece of land somewhere there's something you can do there maybe go and buy something whatever is growing in your area not to go hungry but i believe that uh, that kind of desperation and you are healthy you should sit and consult and ask somebody maybe else what do you think I am this and this and, and this? What do you think I can do? Even if it's to just get some food uh, for my children. Mm -hmm. Families are breaking and, uh, and it's very sad. And especially now, uh, men have also, maybe through their own uh, problems, they have they've also been so many cases of brutality in homes with men and uh, this kind of being, bring, you know, I've seen so many videos on YouTube where men bring their girlfriends into the matrimonial home. Uh, I think that is very barbaric. <laughs> I call it. Yeah, yes, yes, it is. You know, mm -hmm. with, with the COVID, so many mm -hmm. of these cases have risen up. Yes. Of people losing their businesses, mm -hmm. losing their jobs, mm -hmm. even even losing their, their marriages. Yes. But we need to encourage the people mm -hmm. so that the people would know mm -hmm. that if you are at the bottom, mm -hmm. you are not permanent. You are not there. permanent. The there. bottom is not permanent. Mm -hmm. I normally tell the people here that uh, the best place to hit mm -hmm. is the bottom. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you hit the bottom, mm -hmm. you are sure you are not get going any lower. Mm -hmm. That is the lowest you can be. Yeah, I, I can support that because, when, you know, I, I left many things. I mean, there was a lot of property mm. I left. Mm. And I was, my village, I couldn't go back to the village. So mm. I had to think. I had to think hard. But like I said in the beginning, what helped me is my education mm. and my career. Mm. And that's why it's so important for all of us girls to please finish complete your courses. Young men, stop dragging, drug taking. So many people, men are getting lost. Like I hear now in high schools, mm. they are being sent home every, the time they open the other time. In every school, I have received parents mm. wanting to me to help them get people to cancel them. But then the schools have said, canceling is not you come to, my, to me, mm. I cancel you and I give you a letter, no you have to be cancelled five times. Mm. That means five weeks. That means you have been suspended for almost five weeks. Mm. Cancelling every week, every week, every week, so that you can do that. I only hope that uh, there will be any high school uh, children or parents who will hear this. I have personally met some who have come to my office. Yeah, and there are those ones who get transferred from secondary to secondary to secondary. And girls are becoming also, they are catching up with boys. In fact, they have overtaken boys, drinking, smoking, bank, bank and other drugs. Mm. You know, those very many different types. There was another girl who was trying to explain so many, I think six different types of mm. drugs. A girl, you know. So this was somebody we have to sit with the parents, they come, they cry, they cry, and they started in high school. Mm -hmm. So parents, I think I mentioned in the beginning mm -hmm. why I decided to start the Rizu Wanyoike Foundation. Because I want to grow with these parents. Mm -hmm. I want them to grow 
uh, me giving them examples. Mm -hmm. and, and I would want them one day to come and sit in the counseling room. And listen to this young adult talking about what they encountered at home. Mm -hmm. It's not something I'm making up. It mm -hmm. is real at home because there is no peace. Mm -hmm. The man is coming drunk, beating the wife in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. The kids are being called names by their fathers. They are being, there is one father, of course the boy was in drugs, who said that, uh, you know me I receive even from outside, they come to our office. Mm -hmm. And they said, and then he said, that then when this boy was told, I don't know, to go, he told the father, yes, my dad, I'll go. But remember, you are the one who gave birth to me. Mm -hmm. That will never change. Then he said, he regrets that minute that he conceived. Mm. That this, you conceived that day, I, 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 I regret that day mm. when you were born. That's the kind of fathers now wow. who are so desperate, mm. they don't know what they're talking to their sons. And they got uh, affected when they were very young. Mm. You know, parenting these days, it's not like the way we were being brought up, no. Bishop. Mm. It's different. Mm. And you are young also, you are bringing kids now, go with the times. Mm. Parenting is there. You have also to change. You have to change your tactics. If you are in business, find a way of how you are going to make sure that your two-year-old, your three-year-old child, you know them. Mm -hmm. You know their, what they are doing. They, if they are those ones who used to beating others, know that will be a husband who will be beating the wife. If it's the girl who is defy, you know, doing mm. funny, funny things, that's the wife who will be doing that. They mm. grow like that. In other words, children grow by observation. Yes. And whatever they are observing their yes. home yes. is what they will transfer into their homes. In, into their, into into their, their other homes. lives. So mm. if the parents are observing, open your eyes and look at how your daughter... Don't you know there's this teenage st uh, stage whereby... Uh, People say, you know, they are going through something. Yes, they are going through something. You know, especially the girls, when they start, when, after age 12, when they start growing the, 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 these ones mm. a bit, some of them are happy, others are trying to hide. Mm. And that is the time they go into some kind of a depression, not a bad depression, but they don't want even, you know, to, they change character. Yeah. Mm. Follow them up. Talk to them the more. Tell them everything. Tell them everything, what is happening to their body. And tell them how to respond to that. Show them. Otherwise, you lose them. Mm. You lose them there as the teenagers. They, you start going out there. Mm. They go out, meet boys there. Naturally, of course, people, when they are growing, mm. they, they, are, they are there. You know, there is nothing that is done that is not natural. But that's, we should not try to know life is by seasons. And there's no season that is repeated. When you're primary, <laughs> you're in primary, you never go to uh, high school. Seasons, until you become a grandfather, that's another last season, and then mm, die. Mm. I, 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 think, I think you have so much, so much you need to give to the, to the society and the community, and you're doing a great job. But our time is so much, is so much uh, no. spent. Yes. Uh, if, if anybody wanted to contact you, how would they get, uh, how can, is there a way that they can get to you? Yes, there is a, there is a, the, the number which they call. Mm. Uh, I don't have my PA number, mm. but I, I have the college number. Mm -hmm. uh, In other words, they can call the college number. They can you know. call the college that, that number. That's a public number, yes. yes. Yeah, then they'll be directed to either the counselor or mm. to me. Mm. That is 07. Two two five four seven seven four six again mm. zero seven two two five four seven seven four six. Mm -hmm. Well, thank, thank you so very much. Our thank viewers, we you. want to say thank you so very much for being with us. And I want to say to Liz, thank you so much for coming and for opening up your heart. Uh, people are looking for that open heart, that one who will talk without reservation and help, and help them. Uh, for, the, for those of you watching, we want to say thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you. You can get Liz through that number, which is right on the screen, and she will be of help to you.
you or you can pour your heart to her and her staff and you will be you will be helped or you can go to nibs you go to any nibs and ask and they will tell you how to get to her we want to say thank you so very much for being part of open talk tonight this is you talk or i talk or we hear one another and out of the talk you get something i pray that you have grasped something out of the discussion tonight may the lord bless you this is your pastor and your friend for a long time bishop mark karaoke from open talk one accord television god bless you we'll see you again coming wednesday thank you